Kim Bingham versus Max Postume. So far, a lot of black green in win and ins. None of it actually locked for the top eight yet. Mm -hmm. It's a deck that was pretty much dominant in week one. You know, it made it uh, three of the top four decks were some variation of black green. Uh, but it, it has some exploitable weaknesses. I expect that we'll continue to see it, but uh, people have gotten a lot about it figured out already. Uh, Fatal Push has been excellent against this deck all weekend. Yeah, Fatal Push, I mean, definitely right. Early on, we've seen it. A lot of decks trying to be low to the ground, and just the combination of Grasp of Darkness and Fatal Push, whether it's coming out of Black Green Delirium or coming out of, say, a blue-black control deck, it's looked very strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've, we've seen some copies of that in the Black-Red Aggressive deck. Uh, it's quite good at slowing these other decks down. So six players looks like trying to take a draw into top eight, five of them in. Bradley Shepard, Dylan Donegan, Luke Feeney, Corey Lynch, and Todd Anderson almost certainly into top eight right now. These, we have two matches which are for sure winning ins. William Bingham's match here. On their table we have Zan Sayed's match. So black Team Earl Drazi and red black zombies trying to knock into the top eight. Yeah, potential for some pretty sweet decks to crack it. Six cards apiece here. Both players taking a mulligan to start. And it looks like that'll be the score. Six cards apiece. So because Teamer Eldrazi is so good against removal, I would think that the Black Green Delirium, Max is looking for his creatures more than he's looking for his kill spells. Yeah, he wants to exploit his synergies. He really wants to cast Verdurous Gearhawks as quickly as possible. Training of some creature lands to start. Yeah, Bingham's deck's been interesting in that it, I was going to say it rarely has early creatures as he plays Metallic Mimic. Uh, his early plays are the Mimic, Shocks, and Harness Lightnings. His deck really starts on three mana. Show me an Eldrazi Sky Spawner. We haven't seen it yet. It looks pretty good. Mimic swings for two. So he, choose, he chose Eldrazi as his creature type, which means all... First of all, Mimic's an Eldrazi. All his Eldrazi get a 1-1 one, one counter. So I think he has Sky Spawner, but no land. So he plays another Mimic naming Eldrazi, which means it's an Eldrazi, which means it gets a 1-1 one, one counter. And then Maxwell does Grasp of Darkness it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. He has Shock, Sky Spawner. Looks like even Rogue Refiner. That third land will be really good, though William did miss it once. Mm -hmm. And Maxwell has plenty of lands here. That's one of the difficulties with Mimic. Right now, there's just a lot of Grasps and Fatal Pushes floating around. You see Max, a, a Walking Ballista and an Evolving Wilds. I, I don't think you're going to get to see your play yet, Ryan. It's mm, no. Mimic attacks. And a block for a trade. It's fine by William. He picked up Harness Lightning for the turn, but no more lands yet. So Will Max is pulling away on resources. And I like that uh, Maxwell just blocks there. Because yeah. if you just shoot them, wh what if Bingham is playing Blossoming Defense? Yeah. You just yeah, get, that's yeah. You get caught by. There's no reason not to block. Yep. Remember, both plays on mulligans to six, so some speculative hands. The, it's not a foregone conclusion here that Maxwell has a follow-up play. You know, if he's sitting on all lands, it's a dangerous spot. Mm -hmm. Does have Delirium online with instant artifact creature land. Okay, Mind Rack Demons. That seems pretty good. Now will enable his delirium. Mm -hmm. So four five. No energy in the reserves for Bingham, so Harness Lightning's not going to be able to take down the four five just yet. Bingham, hunting for a third land. And there we go, Spire Bluff Canal. And he's going to double kill spell, Shock and Harness Lightning. It's a big price, but he gets the demon off the table. I said before, there's not that much action on Maxwell's hand. He's got a, he's a little land heavy. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, William might be fine. 
Oh, he does. So Max does get to reload a card like Traverse the Open Vault. Yep, given that he already has Delirium, that means he has a higher density of relevant cards in his deck. Looks like he's going for another Mind Rack Demon. Well, if Bingham just two for one himself to solve the first one. Yeah, yeah, this one's great. Looks like he's going here, to go. Here comes the Demon. Yeah, another four or five, milling four more. Go back over to William Bingham. He does have a copy of Rogue Refiner. I know that's a card you've been pretty high on right now in the format. Just it's been looking very strong in Bingham's deck. Mm -hmm. A lot of the decks in the format are really heavy on one-for-one -one removal spells, which Rogue Refiner, sure, it dies to a lot of them, but it replaces itself. Uh, the energy is also of a lot of value in many of these decks because they're frequently playing four Ether Hubs. Well, Jurassic Sky Spawners to play for Bingham. Brings a Scion along. Not to mention pumping your potential Harness Lightning. And a great pickup for Maxwell. Looks like he has a copy of Verderous Gear Hulk now in the hand. And yeah, he'll play that one. The Team Earl Tarazi deck, it seems like it it may have a lot of difficulty, you see, as he makes a 7-8 flyer. I mean, its removal is all damage-based. Mm -hmm. So a 7-8, I'm not certain how William deals with that. Yeah, that's going to be tough. You look at his removal, Shock, Harness Lightning, I mean, I, I guess Harness Lightning? That's, ugh. Gonna need to make some energy first. He can steal games by chaining Elder Deep Fiends. That is one of the strengths of his deck. Yeah, remember that from Old Standard. Those decks were always, you know, if you have enough of them, especially with cards like Sanctum of Ugin, uh, sure, that could happen. Mm -hmm. Four Sanctum of Ugins in William's deck, so. Two on the battlefield. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised if he's been winning a few games that way. He's going to cast, swing with Sky Spawner. Cast Rogue Refiner. If he sacks Scion and a creature, he could emerge a Wretched Griff here. But I'm not sure that gets him anywhere. I guess it gets a Deep Fiend into his hand. Mm -hmm. But that's about it. Yeah, the Wretched Griff doesn't make significant blocks on the following turn. That is going to be the play, though. Sacrifices the Scion for mana, the Sky Spawner for Emerge, and the Sanctum Vugan to the trigger to cast Wretched Griff, finding Elder Deep Fiend. So it looks like he's going to attempt to, as you said, steal a game by, by chaining Deep Fiends. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's starting from very, he's very far behind to start this kind of play. Yes. Was it, it is 13 power on Maxwell's side of the board. So this line that William's doing starts with a chump block. Some really great games start with a chump block. I'm just throwing that out there. It is a precarious situation for Bingham, though. Yeah, and I suppose if Maxwell wants to make a lethal swing, he would have to add a hissing quagmire to to the to the attack. Traverse from Pump Maxwell. How about adding a another, murderous gear? Yeah, hulk? another gasoline, another green gear. Hulk. Sounds great. Yeah. Let's add four more power to the attack. Let's just not even let an attack happen. Yeah, well, if you let's, have to, let's shuffle these cards. If Bingham has to chump block with both creatures, he suddenly has no ability to emerge, emerge Elder Deep Fiend. Yeah, that will be game. And Max Postion, the six-card battle. Both players on a mulligan. He emerges victorious. So we look over at the sideboards. So I'm going to start with William Bingham. He's in a hole playing Team Eldrazi. Uh, Barrel's Expertise, Incendiary Flow, Natural State, Negate, and Unsubstantiate are two of in his deck. And then he has some Go Big plans, which we've seen him use against these black green decks. Chandra, Jace, Sky Sovereign, Worldbreaker. Yep. We saw him in a game where his opponent brought in a bunch of Planeswalkers, and the Sky Sovereign cleaned up very well there. Uh, so that card is really good if that's what you're expecting. Uh, the Planeswalkers are quite good as well. I really like uh, Barrel's Expertise here. Uh, a combo that he has access to, you know, Maxwell's casting a lot of large creatures. You can Barrel's Expertise and then cast Thought Not Seer off of it and then okay. take one of their sweet cards out of their hand. So that's the five mana. It bounces three cards, and he gets a four mana spell for free. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, especially his deck is one that has quality fours, like Thought Not Seer. Mm -hmm. On Maxwell's side of the board, 
he's got a full four copies of Transgress the Mind. That's something we don't see too much out of the Delirium deck, mm -hmm. but I have to think that's very good against a deck that's all large cards. Yes. Um, anything else? I think all four come in, but anything else you like here? Um, I like Kalidus a decent amount. Uh, just this is potential to have a race. You can exile things. Yeah, he didn't see a matter reshaper in that game, but uh, yeah, that's he's an interaction that you can take advantage of. If you see something like Eldrazi Sky Spawner, it's a good bet. There's a matter reshaper in the deck mm -hmm. or Wretched Griff, right? Uh huh. Uh, Nissa Voice Zenikar is solid in matchups like this, where there's a lot of large creatures going back and forth. There's some argument for Lost Legacy naming Elder Deep Fiend. All right. It's uh, yeah. That's the way he steals games. Take that. Exactly. I want to talk about this card, and we have so much this Rishkar's expertise. So this is the green expertise. Yes. Card. It is six mana. Draw cards equal to the power of the largest creature you control, mm -hmm. and then play a five mana card for free. So you draw. If you can do it with something you can play, you just like draw six, drop a gear hulk, or something really stupid. Yeah, Bingham demonstrated that it's difficult for him to deal with a large toughness creature throwing shock and hardness, harness lightning at a mind rack demon. Uh, that, that suggests that Ristgar's expertise could be quite powerful in this matchup. Yeah, I, I, th I kind of like it here. So in a Delirium Mirror, you can't maybe play that because your creatures die too frequently, but I don't know that that's true here. And I, if he resolves one Rishkar's expertise, I don't know that William can come back from that. Yeah, if you're able to draw a lot of cards and say cast a Verdurous Gear Hulk at the end of it. I also just want to see someone play that card. You know, I want, <laughs> I want to see the, I want to see the Gear Hulk be an eight eight. Then I want to see him draw eight, make Gear Hulk a twelve twelve and swing. I, that's just that sounds great. That would be a good turn. <laughs> Players are gonna get ready for a second game. Remember, this is the first of our two win and ins, both going on. Uh, when we do have the top eight, though, for those of you watching us on Twitch.tv, you can join the SCG Tour over in the Feature Match area. We do our Twitch subscription program, which means when we go off air here after the last round, we will in a half hour, we'll announce our top eight on the stream, and for 15 minutes, there will be voting for anyone who's subscribed as to what players and what matches you want to see on coverage. Uh, you can subscribe now and be ready and join in on the voting just shortly. Uh, $4.99 a month. Uh, you also get custom emoticons and badges. Yeah, potentially some pretty sweet decks in the top eight. Make sure you watch the one that you want to watch. We do know we have two Jeskai pilots in the top eight. Looks like Todd Anderson's going to be in with black green. I want to see the matchup, I'm going to say here, between Bradley Shepard and Dylan Donegan. Yes. I, that, it's the two Sahili players, I think the most impressive Jeskai players on the weekend that we've seen. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see that square off. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing Timur Eldrazi or Black Red Zombies either. <laughs> Zan, Zan Sayed in our other win and in. He's playing Black Red. Both Zan and Bingham 8-1 yesterday. 3-2 and two today for each player. Both taking approaches off the beaten path and both potentially in the top eight here. Yeah. It's interesting when you watch the development of a standard that Black, Green, and Jeskai, we're seeing a lot of them because I think going into this format after the bannings and the set release, these are the two decks you could count on to be good. Mm -hmm. Jeskai Sahili is, they just printed this great combo. There's no way this isn't good. And this is the obvious build of it, too. Mm -hmm. Black Green. Black Green's always been great. And, you know, the Delirium, it, it didn't lose much. It's got, there's that, those decks were, you could count on them to be good. Mm -hmm. What is exciting is they're probably not the only good decks. And watching the, kind of the format figure out what the other ones are. We're seeing some of it this week. Some tries last week. I imagine next week at the Pro Tour, we'll see even more. Yes. There's a lot of very powerful cards in Standard currently. Right. You know, Gideon is a great card that no one's playing. I'm I'm not convinced there's not a good Gideon deck. And we really haven't seen Aetherworks Marvel since Emrakul was banned. Right. And certainly that's a knock on the card. I mean, you probably have to play, I don't know, more Ulamogs or find something else that chains for value. Mm -hmm. But it could exist. Maybe it's maybe we can find something in the Eldrazi. William Bingham, sir, one certainly is trying it this weekend. Mm -hmm. So for game number two, there's no mimics this time for William. Starts off on Botanical Sanctum and Wastes, meaning he has all his, three of his four colors set up. And we'll see the hand transgress the mind. Will show us what we're working with. It is no third land for Bingham. That's danger. But here's what he does have. 
Matter Reshaper, Matter Reshaper on three, so he's got some plays. World Breaker, Elder Deep Fiend, Thought Not Seer, and then he does has, have Barrel's Expertise. So he needs that third land, but once he has it, things are okay. Yeah, he can start casting Matter Reshapers uh, for Maxwell, given that there's two Matter Reshapers. He can't just turn this hand off with the one transgress. Does he even bother taking the Matter Reshapers? They hook over Thought Not Seer. Yeah, given that there's two copies, it's not the most exciting pick. So Thought Not Seer exiled. Big draw step here for William. Matter Reshaper is the sort of card that the Black Green Delirium deck can just present a larger body than at some point in the game and not really care about yeah. the value, whereas Thought Not Seer will always take a card. Second game in all, Williams, two Landeros on the play, not converting. Some bad luck for him. And now Maxwell will make the most of it. Rish Car on three. And William, only one turn delayed. He hits a land, and that's just a very good one. It's his basic mountain. That's the color he was missing. Yep, all of his colors are online. So casts Matter Reshaper, the first of two. Glad to see he hit the land. I uh, His deck's pretty neat, and I don't think he could have stomached missing again. Right. We'll see another transgress. Well, same hand before. It's added a Sky Sovereign since we last looked at it. And Maxwell, he's going for the not letting you play magic line. <laughs> he takes the other Matter Reshaper. That can be danger, though, right? Because if the board is even here, and Matt, like by taking the low impact cards, he's giving Maxwell the chance to just draw lands. Well, the scariest card in the hand is likely Elder Deep Fiend. Bingham does need to draw specifically a blue source to be able to emerge that one. But when he does, he gets a 5 6. Mattery Shaper could hit a land. He mm. can maybe eat an attacker. There's mm. a lot of good stuff going on. Right. Yeah, I guess I was a little surprised we didn't just see Deep Fiend, but. William misses the land for a turn here, so big opportunity for Maxwell. And, you know, it does make sense just to take the only castable spell as well. You see this here with the mana. Maxwell's only play here is a Noxious Gearhulk, and now he's kind of deciding uh, if he wants to do that. Like, you know, don't take a Matter Reshaper, then... Yeah, he's pretty committed to this mana denial. William with a draw. It is a land. It's Sanctum of Ugin. Yeah, but uh, Maxwell's first transgress did take Thought Not Seer, so no action on four here. Yeah, William's hand is Sky Sovereign, World Breaker, Elder Deep Fiend, Barrel's Expertise. None of those actually, he needs a fifth land before he can play anything. Maxwell looks like he's pretty heavy on lands. I believe two Evolving Wilds in the hand. Yeah, this is a danger, right? So all of, we're one land away from this being fine. William hits the land, the Sky Sovereign shoots down the Rishkar, and, and this is good. Yeah. I don't think Maxwell wants to get into a slugfest with this deck, mm -hmm. where, where both players just start jamming five drops at each other. Maxwell will swing with Rishkar. Block, trade. I want to say I do like that attack from Maxwell, especially when you're looking at Sky Sovereign possibly happening. Mm -hmm. The Sky Sovereign would just uh, kill the Rishkar. It's also true that until Bingham can produce another creature, uh, he, needs to both, he needs to find Blue Source and now another creature to sacrifice to Elder Deepian to cast that. Standing unsubstantiate. William six. got the unsubstantiate and off of Matter Reshaper. Off of Matter Reshaper. And he does that to put the spell back into his hand. No Mind Rack Demon. Draws. Oh, and he has to pass again, though. Misses the land. He had two shots at it. Well, the Rish is off the table. The Sky Sovereign is less significant. It is less significant. And in, in a lot of ways, right? He doesn't have the Matter Reshaper now either. Mm -hmm. Uh, which means he can't, he, he, it's worse. So, Worldbreaker, I mean, William's hand is Sky Sovereign, Worldbreaker, Elder Deep Fiend, Barrel's Expertise. Like, a fifth land doesn't even really fix things. It's just, it's a mess. Right. Mind Rack Demon from Maxwell, he's going to try it again. Had it substantiated last turn. Now, both players are at 20, so we're still in this range where William could start chaining some kill spell, some lands, and it might be fine. He's got life points to work with. Maxwell's not, you know, if... Sorcery land creature, the card types are you in kidding? Maxwell's How many graveyard. 
I just, we, I don't think we've seen any player all weekend take damage off a man, Mind Direct Demon, and certainly not when they have like 20 cards in their graveyard. <laughs> yeah, somehow still off Delirium. Matter Shaper the play from William Bingham. It oh. will be hit by Grasp of Darkness. That'll that mean, fix that. Oh, no. That'll fix that. It does put Evolving Wilds into play for William, though. So at long last, he gets that land. He's able to cast and start crewing Sky Sovereign that uh, alleviates the yeah. Mind Rack Demon problem. I mean, once we get to seven lands, <laughs> I know, that's, that's how the game's going for William. Once he gets to seven lands, World Breaker looks really good here. Yeah, um, does some good blocking. Yeah. So because of that Grasp of Darkness, Maxwell's not going to take damage. So they're still not going to see that trigger today. Right. There's not yet. I, you, I kind of forget there's even a drawback on Mind Wrecked <laughs> even. Like, it just comes just, up so it's seldom. It's just a 4-5 for five, 5. Yeah. Flying Trample. It's a good card. <laughs> but Maxwell's still showing that he's uh, light on interaction. Uh, activates Hissing Quagmire. Swings for 6. It's actually his first damage of the game. It's going to take Bingham a little bit of time to be able to interact with this demon, though. Draw still, still not a land. Nope. He's got, I mean, he gets, he has Barrel's Expertise this turn. He could Rogue Refiner, or he could Expertise into Rogue Refiner. He'll just play the 3-2. Which I, I guess I'm a little surprised. I thought he might, I don't know. Saving the expertise for a higher impact turn, I suppose. And we're never going to play that card. <laughs> Once we start, like, to the slaughter, the play by Maxwell. So there goes Rogue Refiner. Deep Fiend, Wretched Griff. Oh, this is just a, it's a mess. A walking Ballista, the pickup for Maxwell. That's going to change the pace of this game a lot. Yeah. And I, don't, I think... I don't know that William can do this in time, because we see a 3-3 walking ballista. Um, Deep Fiend, Deep Fiend, Wretched Griff. Sky Sovereign, World Breaker, Expertise. This is, like, hang on, I keep saying, it's just kind of, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. Plays the, the Windy Constrictor and the walking ballista. This is going to force, I think, the hand on Barrel's Expertise. He can bounce him. He's going to take two damage off the ballista in response. Yeah, bounce all three. Put a card into play, or cast a card. Puts Eldrazi Sky Spawner into play. Maxwell just missing a couple points of damage there on the Ballista, but still has a great board here. As he just can reload, we see Winding Constrictor, Oh, and this is even better. Walking Ballista for t one, make that two from the snake. And then, I like this a lot, Rishkar. That mm -hmm. card just so good with the Constrictor. Yeah. That's going to put these creatures out of range of getting hit by the Sky Sovereign. So Ballista up to four. So a four, 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 five. Ballista is going to immediately shoot down both of William's creatures. And he'll pass the turn. With William at 10, yeah, he draws uh, a, another Elder Deep Fiend. This, I, he might have the whole set. I think it is four Deep Fiends, or it's either three. This is like, this is, this is gross. You see him just fanning it out. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah, when you, when you uh, have no this creatures on the bad. battlefield, those Deep Fiends just taunt you in your hand. Yeah, and unfortunately, this is lethal. Um, if he kills, the the only creature you can kill with the Sky Sovereign is the Rishkar. Maxwell can tap four mana, make the Ballista a 4-4, four four, attack for eight, and shoot the rest of the way there. Well, the Ballista is in range of the Sky Sovereign now. Okay, so, he, oh yeah, he can kill the Ballista. Mm -hmm. yeah, because he took down the Sky Spawner. All right. So it's not dead yet. Uh, he'll go to two from the creature lands. He's dead to an untapped land. Well, actually, Blista in response, and then activate the Hissing Quagmire, and then we have Lethal again. Put him down oh, to yeah, eight. Yeah, puts him to eight. Yeah, it is Lethal. If he, if he remembers those two points, it's Lethal. 
You know, ch chaining elder deep fiends is one of the ways you steal games that is just happening in the wrong order. Our backup feature match also concluding, um, it was a match between the four color Sahili deck from Jeffrey Ashkin and the red black zombies deck by Zan Sayed. Uh, it is Jeffrey Ashkin on four color that's the winner there. And he is in now kind of a dogfight for top eight. He's going to have to wait breakers. He's going to be eighth or ninth, depending on how things break. Uh, for Zan, though, and Red Black Zombies, he is going to fall one match short of the top eight. Mm -hmm. So Harness Lightning takes care of the snake. Yeah, and and Bingham found Bingham. a lethal line, pumped the uh, blocking ballista twice. It hits for four, moves all four counters. Alternatively, could have activated both hissing quagmires with the same mana investment. Uh,